What should I say now? We're traveling to China to tackle, take on the one way. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds right. Hello and welcome to the Cognizant Riffraff. My name is Lucas Lavelle. No? Not today? Though our initial escape from the continent of Africa was aided by our ability to cooperate, many ancient cultures evolved separate and uniquely many years after the initial migration stories were lost to us. Leadership and time had separated us, geography had confined us, and natural disaster defined us. Today, as has been the case throughout most of written history, Migration and racism, hunger and politics, greed, apathy, and altruism all play a hand in the geopolitical collage that is our world. The interconnection of nations and the relationships between them perhaps have never been so important to understand. So thank you for continuing to follow us into some of history's greatest stories, failures, and triumphs. Perhaps with the reverence for each other's heroes and lessons, we can all grow together into a more peaceful and understanding world. From our humble nomadic hunter-gatherer beginnings to malnourished farming communities determined to find an easier way to states destined to become nations, nations that would create their own borders and reshape the world around them. Defying the natural order, drawing ever-changing synthetic markers created by the will of men and the machines of progress and war, isolation over time became an impossible strategy to maintain for all nations. Today we are going to dive deep into the origins of this ancient culture, a history that many feel is the longest continual history we have spanning back thousands of years. Our art, philosophy, and culture may be different, but war, war never changes, and people though we wear different clothes and speak newer versions of languages are often motivated today just as they were then. Feelings, stature, opportunity, crime and punishment, culture, and individual leaders, a degree of consumerism, a wanting for purpose, a longing for answers, a desire to leave a better world for the next generation, it was all there, and not just in China, but in near every society who grew to pass the test required to claim nationhood. China and Egypt, while isolated initially rise in strikingly similar ways to ancient Mesopotamia, where we'll get to soon in upcoming episodes, fields of Egyptology have given ancient Egypt the respect that she deserves. Massive cultural implementations of Egyptian ways followed our industrial revolution and led the U.S. from archaeological discoveries to design our capital's architecture. Today, China is a world power who wields heavy international influence whose ancient past seeks a tourist boom. While we may not be designing a forbidden city, we certainly are not at a loss for Chinese imports, though recent tariffs and relationship changes may alter this. Our guess is that China plans on making the best of this century, and we're excited to dive into this past. Archaeologists, governments, and amateurs have uncovered thousands of artifacts spanning back tens of thousands of years in the lush valleys of mountain shade, along riversides, and under the hot sands of Chinese desert. Bones, relics, and heirlooms show a deep appreciation for art and ritual as individualism and expression are seen even millennia ago. As early as 10,000 BC, these ancient peoples had harnessed iron oxide to make colors available for art and clothing predating the concept in the Western world. By the 6th millennia, people of the region had harnessed incremental technological improvements leading to agricultural revolution greatly stabilizing civilizational efforts. Evidence of silk production is thought to have begun in this time, an indication of Chinese culture. 
as no peoples living in these regions up to this point are technically considered the precursors of what is to become Chinese. Instead, Chinese existed much like Greece or Rome before unification of warring states by common cause and culture, or war and inception. Many years from their initial rise to the technological innovations of silk production, the Shang would lay the foundations for what would become the mandate of heaven and dynastic rule that would identify the Chinese way of thinking and governing for thousands of years until the early 20th century. Having mastered the ability to make goods, domestication of some animals, hunting and farming, the Chinese would develop an economy based on trade and agriculture. A hybrid for its time, it would rise to remarkably vivid and early societies. Many would evolve without contact from the West for millennia. Chinese culture would benefit greatly from its isolation, and so too later would the world. Along with art and cunning, a reverence for the dead can be seen in early burial sites separated by family line littered with offerings and tokens of remembrance. By the 5th millennia BC, early tribes practiced ritualistic unburying of their dead, stripping remaining flesh from the bones only to rebury the bones together as a sign of respect for the dead. As is the case in most cultures, religion would evolve from mythological beginnings and oral traditions. These early peoples were a polytheistic, superstitious people with varying rituals and practice. Here, intricate stories relayed the nature of our universe from creation to everyday occurrences. These stories were sown into the hearts of these early ancestors. Gods, spirits, monsters, demons, heroes, emperors, and dragons all had a part to play in elaborate tales showcasing the human struggle. Perseverance of early farming communities and growing technological advancement had led to something we consider civilization, but brutality was not far behind the winds of change. By the third millennia there is evidence of human sacrifice and ritual burying of servants. Chinese devotion to the dead kings would rival Egypt. The effect of hierarchy and competing faiths would adapt new Bronze Age technology to violent ends. Chariots, axes, swords, bows, and arrows all would leave remains of warfare. The bones of soldiers marred in battle would bear witness to their ancient brutality. Behind the war and chaos was a growing order, a developing technology that would revolutionize China and any nation who mastered its abilities. The written word. Oral tradition and increased need for government record keeping created a need for a complex system of writing. It is fascinating that nearly 5,000 years later today's Chinese language can trace its heritage to ancient societies. Along the Yellow River Valley, many legible characters have been recovered on cattle bones and tortoise shells dating between the mid-18th and 16th centuries BC. With time and study, they came to help provide a better understanding of what was the Shang society and its Shang dynasty. Referred to as oracle or dragon bones, they were used at first by all classes of early Shang people and then solely reserved for the king's divination priest as power began to tighten its grip. The use of oracle bones has given a great look at Shang society, elaborating upon the thoughts and prayers of the people in that time. While the city of Uruk in the Fertile Crescent could boast golden walls and as many as 50,000 inhabitants in its peak, and the Egyptian marbles were being made to last, isolated yin made progress all its own. The city dates its founding to around 1300 BC, growing over time and established as the last of the Shang capitals. It held as many as 12 kings and their armies and stood until the Shang saw the feet at the hands of the Zhao for nearly 255 years as the zenith of Chinese civilization. Several large settlements impressive but not in scale with Mesopotamia of the same era were found to have intricate exterior walls surrounding palaces, Bronze Age industrial areas, political offices, homes, temples, and cemeteries. The city of Yen stood on nine square miles, impressive for its day, about ten times the size of the Vatican City.
Now that we kind of understand the isolation and unique features of Chinese development, we can begin to dive into what exactly happened to allow these families to rule over such an eclectic and intelligent people for thousands of years. This system existed in history for what is considered a long, long time. Over 2,000 years actually, so we're going to need more time to get deeper into that. So that's where we're going to leave it. We'll see you next time as we discuss a possibly fictional dynasty created to legitimize another. Thank you so much for joining us at the Cognizant Riff Raff. And good night.